when you played at Wembley against Spurs last time, you said about you learn probably more in that defeat than, than maybe you had in other ones. So is that perhaps reason to worry about Spurs and their last match when they lost against Watford? And, and what do you learn in, in games like that? OK, it was a, a very difficult game for us because we made two big mistakes around the, the first two goals, especially. Came a bit better up in the game then, um, made the, our goal. Yeah, but lost at the end, completely deserved. But this is this kind of game which which can develop in this or this direction. So we had one or two of these games. It was a bit like City, if you want, last year away uh, when we lost Sadio and then the game. Um, we had our moments like in pretty much all the other games, but we were, um, I think it was after we won 7 0 at Maribor, is it possible? Yeah. So um, came there and, and we were not used to it, to be honest, <laughs> to win that high, that comfortable if you want and coming then to a place like Tottenham where you have to to approach completely different where, where you have to um, play completely different and um, so that's that was a for us uh, it was a kind of a wake-up call of course but it was not um, it, it was more a wake-up for the players it's like we, 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 we cannot do it like this I know before that we cannot do it like that but we have to then we, we made a few uh, we had after that pretty good results, and from that point on, I don't think we, we conceded uh, um, a lot of goals. In I think City was early in the season. I, I don't know exactly, but nine goals in, in these two games that doesn't feel good. And you know it better than I do. You make a big story of that, and we have to deal with the story, but not with the, with the goals because we conceded them already. It's not a problem anymore. We can work on from that point, and that's what we did. So yes, of course, we learned. Uh, we, or, it was the experience was uh, that one game is and can be and will be completely different from another game like Maribor and Tottenham, different opponents, different competition, all that stuff. That was clear. And on the other hand side, we, we knew still that we are that we have a good team. And so uh, for us, it was uh, the moment when we um, it was not really a problem. But it was a moment for it was when we could show that we are really convinced about what we are doing. We only have to do it um, more often and in a better way, and then everything will be fine. There was a big spotlight on Dejan after the first half of that match as well. And yeah, he's gone from there. Some players might have crumbled and never be seen again. He's obviously come on and played in a, a World Cup final, and by his own admittance, has become one of the best defenders in the world on, on the back of that as well. So, what sort of journey has he made from that first 45 minutes to, to the World Cup final and maybe to where he is now given? Um, well, he only comes closer to to his potential. I would say is um, the way where he can be. That's how it is. I'm 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 one hundred percent sure. Yeah, never was in doubt about there. Yeah. So, um, but um, with this, what what people maybe would say about him that it was in the past consistency wise was not was not the highest level. It was always very very good and then not that good. And um, but that's he was, and that's what uh, for. In this perspective, it was a very important game for him because. Yeah, he didn't. He, he was not. He was not good in that game. But I said it after the game. I could have changed five, six other players, but I decided to do to do that. He didn't like it, obviously, but it it, um, it helped our relationship as well because it was one situation. I don't care what uh, about if I would judge a player because of 20 minutes in his life, then I would wouldn't know any player anymore because uh, that's how it is. We all have, have our 20 minutes, I would say. And so that's absolutely not a problem. But for him, it was clear. So he is still my 100 percent support. And um, we, 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 we was not even too much talking about these two situations because they were obviously they were obvious. And um, it was only about um, yeah how uh, and what I what I think about him. And when he starts thinking the same about himself, then um, that could help him, um, because my opinion is pretty high. His opinion was rather average, but meanwhile, I think he ha he has the confidence as well. Unfortunately, he's not fit in the moment. That makes it a bit more complicated to to perform. But um, uh, it's all all good, and he will be back. I'm pretty sure now in that very intense um, uh, period with seven games in the next three weeks. I'm pretty sure he will be back in um, in, in in this period. Yeah, Graham Sooner said that he believes that this. Who? Graham Sooner says that he believes that this is. I know him. 
Sorry, it's not uh, sorry, yeah. I only did hear it. Uh, yeah. But he says he believes it's the best Liverpool side that he's seen since the last Liverpool side to win the title. So <laughs> what do you believe this squad is, is capable of now? First of all, it's obviously very positive, but the only problem sometimes legends have is they want to say something very positive, which he did, and put them immediate pressure on us. <laughs> Thank you, Graham. Um, now it's I don't know. I don't know exactly the team from 1990, to be honest. Um, but I know it's Germany was World Cup winner that year. So, uh, but that's only my problem. Um, no, I, I have no idea. The, the thing is, we need to be really good. We need to be really good because all the other teams are so good. So it's not about being the best team. It's about being um, the best team in a, in a specific game to beat the specific opponent. And um, that's that's what we have to do. So, yes, the football changed in the last 30 years a lot. Um, the shirts got tighter um, and the uh, game quicker and um, and yeah, no breaks anymore um, and all that stuff. You cannot compare the football, so you cannot compare really the teams. That's how it is. I don't know who were in the other team um, or how strong the other teams were in the 90s. But that's really not important to us. We have to be as good as possible to, to, to reach the highest for us, whatever it is, I don't know it in the moment. So, but it's so early in the season that I really don't think it makes any sense to speak about and think about anything what will happen at the end of the season. I just spoke about Dejan as well and when he's fit. Just wonder what kind of a decision you're going to have to make when he is fit, given the form that Joe Gomez has shown, both for club and country. It feels like we have 500 games in the next seven weeks, so what I, I hope I can make decisions. So um, I, and I really hope I have them all fit, and uh, I don't have to uh, make a difficult decision. I mean, the, the, the most uh, difficult decisions are when you have no players, and you have to think, OK, how can we do, deal with that? So, But when you have a lot of players, then you can make decisions, good decisions, and uh, it's rather a luxury problem than anything else. So I really hope he's back as soon as possible. And then uh, we have, when Adam is back as well, Ox takes a little bit longer, of course, then we have to squat together, would mean then the first time. And that's um, for us uh, very, very important for the next um, few weeks. And how far away is Adam in fitness? And, and also Simon, is Simon going to be fit? Yeah, Simon's OK. Simon trained completely normal. We gave him the rest he needed with the, with the finger issue. Um, it's fine, trained normal, catch balls, all fine. And goalies are pretty hard in that, so it's, um, it's, uh, they're used to a little pain uh, uh, hand and finger. So absolutely really trained good. Um, Adam, on a good way, on a good way. Um, so it's obviously... Not too serious, but not, it's not available for the weekend, and we will maybe not for next week. But then I hope he can be back. Okay, Julia. Yeah, and just going back to what you were saying about day and when you talking about you know you don't judge a player because of 20 minutes of his life. Just out of interest, how much time do you actually spend investing to get to know the squad of players that you have? How much of that time is taken of yours? It happens all the time. I, 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 it's my, my job. So I don't train myself. I don't run around. So I watch them and I judge them and I try to understand where they are, what, who they are, um, why they are, how they are, why they're in a, in a good shape today and not in a good shape today, and all that stuff. That's 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 my job. So I think constantly about them. So and I, I don't think I. I yeah, the longer we work together with the player, obviously the better you know him. But it's not that I would say I'm, I'm finally through it. So it's just. It's a big part of the job. It's a big part of life, and um, that's how I understand it. So it's not that I constantly go there and think I saw, um, I don't know, a little smile on your face during training. Something nice happened last week, or what? That's not like this. So it's just um, to try to understand. I, I I think really in a in a family like in a football club like with friends, it is always the same. The better you the better you know each other, the more you know about each other, the better is the relationship. So. And that's and the better can, can it work um, if you have to do something together, and that's what we what we try to do. So nothing else. I was just also wondering, you've only made like one change in the first four games of, of this season. Do you take because you just refer like 500 games in the next seven weeks because of the demanding fixture list that you've got now? Are you going to maybe adopt a, a more a rotational approach? Of course we have to. 
Of course, we have to. We, we will see how we exactly can do it. So it's it's a, a big a big misunderstanding that we that we plan the game tomorrow and have an hour and think about the game after that and the game after that. So if you play today, bam, bam, then it, so it's too complicated. You have to go in the next game and then you see who you can choose for the next game. So so that's it. You always try to have your best team, but it's clear with the numbers of games and all that stuff. We get we get so. Um, many informations after a game which you don't have, or maybe you have and don't read, whatever. I'm not sure, but then and then you will see how the players react in different situations. So of course we have to, we have we have to do that. We have rotate. I don't know if you call it rot rotation, but the first four weeks were pretty. The first three games were the same lineup, and then we changed one position. I think it's just to to to. to, to. Yeah, of course, getting the points, have a good start to, to create a basis and all that stuff. It's not about looking how how is he, how is he, and we, we used the players. They had the longest the longest preseason, pretty much. Um, I think apart from Bobby, who came pretty late, um, they all had at least three weeks preseason, and um, that was two up front plus Bobby. And then all the others had a normal break, pretty much. So that's that's good. They had a normal break. They, they started preseason with us, and that's very important. So they were the most stable players in the squad, and that's why we used them. And hopefully, we can now now. And then after four weeks, when it looked quite okay, the fitness level um, um, got better and better for the, one of the other player. Then we had to send them away. And then so now they came back. The last ones came back yesterday. And then today we train, and um, then we we make a lineup for tomorrow. But the other uh, Mauricio Pochini has the same issue, so um, especially for the game tomorrow, uh, that's how it is. And um, so we all have to make constantly the best of what we got. Hi, Jürgen. Hi. Is there a, an extra psychological challenge for your players after an international break, going into a, a big game like this? Not just a physical challenge where. You know, they might feel a bit jaded from travel, but equally they've been playing different systems and then they have to click back into what you want and the speed of Premier League football. It's a big challenge, but I say it's for all of us the same. So it's not that Belgium plays exactly like, like Tottenham, for example, and uh, there were at least three players, I think. Um, Denmark is playing completely different to Tottenham and Ericsson played for them. So it's for all of us, it's for all of us the same. Yeah, it's, I said it's, the, 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 the life as a Premier League manager is never... Uh, during the weeks, never perfect because it's not that you. I have all them, of them together, and then we train and we have six, seven sessions together and can prepare a game. So from now on, we have exactly um, one day to rest, one day to prepare, and one day to play, and then it, the same rhythm as well. So it's not that, that's that's always the challenge for all of us, especially if you are involved in international football. That makes a massive difference. But we have all the same things and so to do, and that's, so it's not a big problem. But for the boys, it's always it's always a big. A big, um, yeah, challenge. Ask whatever requested that they have really, they they really have to, um, yeah, remind themselves immediately of what we actually do, what we actually do, and that's what we we had. A, we had a, quite a good session yesterday. Cannot do too much because a few of them came out of the plane, <laughs> but we did a little bit, and um, and then today another one, and then we need to be ready. That's how it is. Anything else, Rich? No. It's good. Okay. Um, the, the strength of your squad means that Fabinho hasn't been anywhere anywhere near it really so far. But I'm wondering where whereabouts is he now in, in his his progress and how soon will we like to see him? Actually, I don't like to compare players, but um, to be honest, I think we, we had similar we had similar questions and similar things to talk about around about um, Robbo, about Oxley, about. <coughs> Okay, not virtual. <laughs> it was different, but um, yeah, we had it just like that. Maybe we, um, I'm not sure if Sadio did Sadio play from the beginning. I'm not sure, but he didn't all preseason, so that's probably yes. So um, yeah, that's that's it. The, the the thing is, it's absolutely no problem. I don't like the situation. It's not that I like to say Fabinho is full of um, energy, desire, wants to wants to be involved in all that stuff, and then tell him. You are not involved this weekend. That's not nice. It's only it's only the job to do sometimes because we have players that work together now much longer. So he comes from a from another league, a completely different system, which uh, which Monaco played um, to us, and we have a good team together. So that takes time to be. But the plan was, and is still, 
that he will make us better. And that's what we are working on. And that needs sometimes more time and sometimes a bit less. But it's all, from my point of view, it's all fine. But I know the situation is not like um, maybe a few people would have expected. But, sorry, I cannot change that. You mentioned there briefly how when you brought Virgil in, he slotted in straight away. There's been a lot of talk about how well Joe Gomez has played this season. Can you uh, sort of talk about the influence that Virgil has had maybe on him and, and the defence as a whole? This season particularly. Oh, it's always like this. Huh? The better your partner is, the better you can you can be by yourself. It always helps, but it's um, I don't think it's that's the um, Joe has a big potential, and I'm not too. I'm happy that he performed so far pretty well, but much more interested in his performance tomorrow, to be honest. So um, that's um, the, the thing. So we have to we have to be consistent. We have to we have to deliver week in week out. So that's the that's the thing. And um, yeah, of course they both, they both. I think everybody. Spoke about that already. They like each other, but I can tell you, um, both of them like Joel and Dejan as well. So, and even Nate Phillips. So that's a, that's a good relationship between the boys. So they have no no problem with each other. So they they like to play together. In this specific case, I'm sure that um, Virgil's presence helps, of course, Joe. But if Joe would not be a fantastic footballer, he could not use that. So if you play next to Virgil van Dijk, it wouldn't help. <laughs> Massively, I would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One point. Um, right across the second row, David, anything from you? No? Uh, Jürgen, Gary Neville said Liverpool should kick the Champions League into touch this season to give them the best chance of winning the Premier League. Um, even though you are top in general, is that something a club like Liverpool can afford to do? How should that work? What do we do? We, we don't play Champions League or what? Just like focus more on the Premier League. Now, Gary should come over and tell me how that exactly works. So what, how do you prepare a game when you don't focus on it? You bring your kids in the Champions League, that would be funny. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know So what he means with that, to be honest. So we have to, we have to play football. We have to, we, I think we will, a lot of people watch our games as well when we play Champions League and that's our, that's our job, that we do the best we can do in all these games. Um, and that's what we try. So we never, we will see, I think. So I don't know exactly what it means, um, but to focus on one, on one uh, competition <laughs> um, can only be if you, on the one, maybe you are already out the competition nearly, if, you, if it's late in the season that you see you have a chance to do that or do this and all that stuff but um, last year for example we had no chance to 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 focus on one competition because we had to we had to qualify for the Champions League and I don't think that even Gary Neville would have said in a um, quarterfinals in the Champions League come on let City win and um, so they are anyway champions or whatever that doesn't work like this it's a bit I don't want to be too critical about because I don't know exactly how he said it, but it's a bit sitting in an office and talking about football is completely different to doing the job, to be honest. Um, but it's an opinion, and um, maybe what did you say about Man United in that case? To be honest, I thought it's a club he's more interested in. Nothing. He's just scared about the football. <laughs> okay. Yeah.